Good morning, folks. We've got no less than eight top science stories today, and that's on top of an earthquake, weather, and where we're starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day with little but rotation in terms of movement, large coronal holes easily visible turning across, but no sunspots or eruptive behavior. Meanwhile, back at Earth, we are seeing a calming of the solar wind, which is not expected to last. But up there in the top panel, we see the phi angle is shifting again just this morning. That was the signal last time to begin the elevated magnitude alert as the IMF from these coronal holes is solidly connecting to Earth one after another near low heliographic latitudes. A rare rumble struck the low velocity zone beneath Romania yesterday. That is well above average there, and the seismic watch continues elevating today. Let's check the footage out of Lebanon where fierce winds, hail, and flash flooding took over as the same system that has been lashing the region hit there as well. The top alerts looking ahead come to the Philippines and Europe, Philippines due to the typhoon which will drop through the northern part of the country over the next two days and then will dissipate in the China seas. Meanwhile, there is a low just feeding off the waters in southern Europe. This one has all the food it needs to pound the region with significant storms and create severe hazards for flood-prone regions, perhaps even a tornado. Up next, we're starting off the science articles with Hubble's aesthetic look at a monster galaxy. That is linked for you below along with all of this. First article details land wind speed decline since 1970. Not that even the tiniest slowdown may be noticed in the wind over the water, but indeed, only over the land, the wind is not going as quickly. Up next, a good follow-up to our last Cosmic Rays and Lightning article. In this one, we learn that the secondary and elementary particle showers are not at all produced in the lightning bolt, but rather the bolt is a concurrent symptom of the charging, with the secondary particles being cascade-driven from cosmic rays. Interesting piece out showing how proton storm-driving solar flares do an immensely more efficient job at modifying atmospheric electricity than just the high-frequency X-ray wave emission during those events. Remember, the protons bypass Earth's defenses along the magnetic connection to our star. Hopefully we recall that the vertical global electric circuit columns are pressure driven. We now know that the down currents form narrower pathways from ionosphere to ground than the broad return currents going back up to the sky. Always fascinating. A number of solar storms were analyzed for their effect on Irish power systems, and while they witnessed no catastrophic events, during one particular shockwave impact induced geomagnetic current, they noticed that the saturated ground from rainwater reduced resistivity and boosted the damage potential. This principle should hold anywhere on Earth where water is capable of falling from the sky and hitting the ground. In a very interesting paper, they looked at the charging hazards for satellites and found in two specific and somewhat severe cases, the charging and satellite dysfunction was triggered by a CME shockwave interacting with a coronal hole stream. That is a very interesting pattern. Now, last but not least, the frequency of Carrington level events is now almost certainly that lower number of decades apart rather than over a century between them. In the lesser connected eastern world back in 1972, a Carrington class CME impact occurred and mostly had its effect on that region of the globe. In fact, spontaneously and without expectation, an entire line of sea mines exploded during what the radio data is suggesting was the surge of electricity through the region. The exploding ordinances are interesting. The fact that this helps confirm hypothesized shortenings of the Carrington repeat cycle is considerably troubling. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.